I think the, the most of attendees don't know what is ubiquitous. So the ubiquitous computing that we do in uh, research is the how to understand your status in every time. When you wake up, when you come to come here, when you have a lunch, when you currently you hear my talk. So I want to sense of your status. Someone is asleep, feel sleepy, or someone concentrate on my talk. Someone thinks something, and based on the, some sensing technique, so we try to extract what happen on this. So uh, in this world. And uh, based on this sensing result, I try to uh, propose a new context-aware ubiquitous service. So that is an example of the, our research topic. For example, the simple one is a smart alarm system. And uh, sometimes the student make the application to recommend the break. Or sometimes the student make the lunch recommendation system. And sometimes student make a smart navigation system. And uh, someone make the, so the behavior change support system for improving your health. And uh, we develop a such system based on this technology. That is ubiquitous computing. And uh, we consider the education environment uh, and also the working environment is the good so place for experiment such a technologies. This is because so the, I do the research on the education area. So this is because the ubiquitous computing is uh, consists of three areas. First, so that we should collect the data from the actual so our world. So that sometimes we uh, deploy a sensor, for example, in this field. Of course, sometimes set a sensor on the sheet. And uh, sometimes the sensor is included in the uh, vehicle and the city's environment. So every field is our field. And uh, someone focuses on the correcting and uh, goes to the machine learning or some data analysis. And that uh, goes to the application or service topic area and the feedback to the actual field. That is kind of a cyber physical system, so Ananto says. So the, it is so the, the, our ubiquitous research. And uh, that is a uh, so research keyword we, I did in the past. And the uh, left side shows the smart home. So I will introduce the detail in the later. So that we develop the house inside the university and the deploy many sensors in the house. And also we ask the so resident to wear some sensor to monitor the, state, the status. Also the left uh, side, uh, the, this side is a very tiny sensor. Today I bring this sensor here and a very tiny three gram sensor but it contains eight kinds of sensors. We use this sensor to make the, so your belongings to sensors. For example, the, the student make the so belt that embedded the sensor to monitor the, our posture. And uh, sometimes uh, the, we embed the sensor to the golf club. Sometimes we put the sensor into the bicycle. And the strange one is the sensing inside the mouse. We try to extract the stress of our secretary to monitor the movement of the mouse and the, and the humidity on the hand. And the left hand side, uh, right hand side shows the, our so application we develop. And uh, sometimes we uh, do the, so uh, make the application for correcting the urban data. Also we correct, uh, make the, some, uh, we embedded the sensor into the smartphone itself to extract your heart rate, your emotion, and your sleeping state or something. That is our research. That is, and then the, so the, before going to the education part, so we want to introduce the latest technology of, so ubiquitous technologies. That is a photograph of the smart home. So the, 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 there are the three rooms, the living and the bedroom and the kitchen. And also that have the bathroom and toilet room. And the, actually the student can leave this house. So the, at most one, uh, one student live one month in this home. That is located inside the university. But we actually live. Sometimes I stay in this home. And uh, there are the many sensors. The one is a position sensor. So like a GPS, it can uh, monitor the position of the resident. Also the, all the power usage is monitored. Uh, 
pl plug by plug. And also the, the ambient sensor to monitor the humidity and temperature or brightness or something. And uh, we sometimes add more sensor on the door and uh, also the PIR sensor or the, to monitor the uh, power usage on the embedded electricities. And sometimes we put the sensor on the floor to monitor the, our sound of footstep. And uh, we collected the data and uh, sometimes build a new sensor. And uh, after that, we go to the machine learning. That is an important technique for Ubiquitous Company. So we currently explain about the sensing part, that is the upper part. After that, we need to do a labeling process. So, the, we, uh, so if we want to train the computer, we assign the label to the data. And uh, this data is uh, TB, this data is used by uh, fridge or something. And after that, we train the machine, and the ghost, uh, we can make the model for distinguish our behavior. And finally, we go back to the uh, actual so home, to, and the home uh, automatically detect what happened in this home. That is a cycle of ubiquitous computing and the machine learning system. And that is one result. The, from five to next morning, the system monitor the student life. And the uh, left bar shows the actual real data. So that is written by student itself. And the uh, right bar shows the estimated and the predicted value by AI and the sensor technology. And that from this data, for, uh, so sometimes the prediction is missing, but uh, almost so the, his activity is extracted by sensors. In this, so that he start playing the game from nine o'clock until 11.30. So we can easily know from the power usage of the, some sensors. So the, such kind of technology is goes to your, our workplace and also the educational environment now. And uh, so, I'd like to introduce the latest sensing technology I developed. The, the, uh, not only, it's, I just presented smart home and the basics of ubiquitous computing, but uh, so the, I'd like to introduce uh, another example. The, we, I explained about IoT-based sensing that, that is called SenseTeq and the Sensus. And uh, we also so the extract, try to extract the internal state of emotion or stress or quality of life from the sensors. And uh, we utilize the various sensors. So the typical one is a smartphone because all the students, all the people have the smartphone. And uh, as you know, the smartphone has around 10 sensors inside the phone. So we utilize these sensors to extract, figure out what he, she do. And uh, another one is the wearable sensors. Of course, we can buy a Fitbit, and uh, so the currently Google Glass is uh, stopped, but uh, we can easily buy an eye tracking system or other wearable devices. And uh, we also sometimes develop the, some, some uh, sensors. Uh, so I embedded the sensor into the chopsticks to monitor uh, what they are eating. And also, as I said, the embedded sensor to the belt to monitor the posture when they study. And uh, first, I introduced the SenseTeq. So SenseTeq is a very tiny sensor that can use for research. So the, I designed this sensor to, uh, to embed it, it to various things. That is an example my student already embedded. So the, some, some student try to monitor the movement of chopsticks. Some student want to monitor the tooth brushing. And then some student want, want to monitor the movement of the head. And someone, so that, that depends on the student interest. So, uh, someone want to inter, embed the sensor into the such a so remote control, we can extract the, our so, uh, status. And uh, I succeed to make it commercialized to, and sell, sold in Japanese market, but uh, currently not available. So the, it's a very nice sensor, I think. And that is an example that uh, the sensor is embedded on the belt, 
and uh, it uh, monitor the length of waste anytime. So if I eat too much, the application said you eat too much. And uh, to support to uh, recognize our status. And uh, it has also the vibration feedback to uh, notify me. And uh, this sensor got the best demo award in the uh, top conference uh, is week and the Ubicom held in uh, uh, Germany, I think, yeah. And uh, that is the next example we developed with the uh, furniture company, Okamura. So the Okamura is the biggest furniture company in Japan. Maybe you also have the furniture company in Indonesia. So the, they ask us to uh, make the chair uh, having a sensors. We embedded the so tiny sensor on the back of the chair and uh, to monitor the posture. There are the, uh, 18 kinds of posture is, uh, so our system can recognize. And uh, for the sitting position, the shallow or deep, and the uh, upper body is, uh, the leaning of upper body is also sensing by the pressure of this area. And uh, the accuracy is 80%, but uh, the company currently make it commercialized. The, maybe in near future, Okamura start selling this sensor for the future working place. And uh, we also use this sensor for monitoring the concentration uh, of the student. Maybe I will introduce later. And uh, that is a, it's a funny uh, research. So the until then, so that we try to figure out our physical activity, but it's a challenge for sensing our internal activity. So the, that is a heart rate estimation. Of course, we, if we buy a heart rate sensor, we can easily monitor. But if we can predict the future heart rate by machine, so it can help for, for generating the walking uh, route. And uh, we succeeded to estimate our heart rate and by using uh, only the smartphone and, uh, and the smartphone and machine learning technique. And uh, based on this technique, we make the, uh, currently make the navigation system. That is uh, one example of heart rate prediction. So we asked the student to walk uh, around uh, our campus and uh, collect the actual data. And the uh, actual data is the blue line. And the uh, predicted one is the, our uh, AI said your heart rate lies after walking several minutes and then lies down, blah, blah. And uh, that is so the bit strange, but the currently AI can predict our so body uh, status. And uh, that is the second challenge of our us. So the quality of life is very important metric and uh, in, uh, like uh, stress. Uh, on the or depressions, we want to predict the degrees of the quality of life by using the sensor. The currently quality of life is measured by questionnaire. So, so the Japanese government decided to or ask to ask us to uh, make answer for the questionnaire once a year. So, the I need to also the university academic staff must. Uh, make answer. I have no stress. Actually, I have a stress, but uh, I, I always say I have no stress or something. And uh, so the then big bias, if I ask the questionnaire on the paper, we sometimes change my, uh, so the write the different answer because I don't want to, uh, and uh, I don't want, so, so the, the, I, I don't want the, my so supervisor know my mind. But if I use a smart device, for example, the smartphone has the counter step and the smartphone knows the locations and the, some smart devices know the, our skin temperature or heart rate, by combining the diesel sensor and the machine learning technique and the 90% of, of uh, answer can be estimated. It means that if we ask the student uh, about what do you feel about my lecture? So the system automatically recognize the, their emotion or their so status by using machine learning technique. And uh, so, the, that, so the, that is a, 
the latest technique of ubiquitous computing. And uh, we want to apply these techniques into the classroom. So that is uh, the main talk of this uh, keynote. And, uh, until now, that is a basic ubiquitous computing. And maybe you have the interest on after this slide. And uh, we, I'd like to introduce three projects my, uh, my join, I joined. One is the Learning Analytics Center in Kyushu University, that's my university. And uh, also the behavior change and the harmonic collaboration by experimental supplement. That is a national project, uh, mainly done by Osaka Prefecture University, and I joined as a one of the researchers. And the third one is the Immersive Quantified Learning Laboratory, so developed in Germany. So in DFKI, so I learned in this uh, research institute, this is because I know this example, that all the mot uh, motivation is, is to support the student, also to improve the teaching itself. The key word is how to quantify the understanding level, also how to quantify the teaching. That is the main topic of this research, uh, main motivation of this research. First, I'd like to talk about the education uh, system in our university. So compared with uh, Malang State University, our student is not so big. I, the, the number of students is uh, 90,000 students. So that is uh, one of the biggest universities in Japan, but uh, Malang University has more students. <laughs> and uh, i surprised, but uh, we start deploying the e-learning system uh, for all the students. And uh, we ask the uh, student to buy their own laptop and uh, bring the laptop to the classroom from 2013. And uh, we uh, prepare the three e-learning system. One is Moodle, the famous one, that supports attendance and report and the quiz and blah, blah. And also that we developed the Mahara system, e-portfolio, I call. And uh, that is a ref support the reflection and the diary of journaling the study uh, process. And the final one, ebook, that is uh, uh, support for uh, teachers. I can upload the material to ebook and uh, le lecture material, and the student can make the bookmark, and uh, I sometimes make the highlight for the text or something. And we succeed to collect the big data through this e learning system. So, the, so in Indonesia, so the government already started the e learning system. The important is so that our teacher can use this data. That is very important to analyze. And uh, we collected uh, for, uh, 54 million records of the, on the Moodle and the student, uh, what students select, what students do on the Moodle. And also the uh, 100,000 records on the Mahara and the 44 million records on the uh, book system. It's quite important and uh, quite uh, good for research. And the many publication is uh, done based on these data. And uh, currently we focus on the on-site lecture supporting system. That is the kind of real-time support for teachers. The, we, as I said, we have the three e-learning system. And uh, various data is goes to the learning analytics platform. And uh, on this platform, the some so program is always analyze the student status and the feedback to the classroom in real time. And the teacher, so the student cannot know, but the teacher uh, know the status of the student in real time and uh, slightly change the speed of the uh, lecture or slightly uh, change the so material or talking so way. So that is a so very challenging topic, but the, currently now uh, we develop. That is one example. So the real-time browsing heat map. So this is, uh, so I skipped, but uh, so the update minute by minute in the uh, monitor for teachers. The X axis shows the time, and uh, Y axis shows the the number of pages. The teacher prepared a match slide. So this slide is uh, composed by 47 pages. And the, so the teacher 
uh, monitor the which slide so the so they are the 100 student and uh, which slide is currently viewed how many students view this slide or something and uh, on at this time so that I cannot see the number but the the, the heat but many students read this book uh, pages but some students skip this text and uh, check the so previous slide or the former slide and uh, based on this real time monitoring system so teacher can so uh, recognize how many students following the teacher's explanation and uh, the teacher and uh, based on that teacher control the, his lecture speed and uh, sometimes they uh, the speed is slightly changed and uh, be, along the, the student status, teacher control their uh, lecture speed. It is quite useful for teachers, and uh, that is uh, so the very uh, so that system is already used in the our lecture system, uh, lectures, actual lectures. And uh, back to the slide. So the based on this result, we try to make the automatic summarization system. So the because the, we prepare the 100 pages slide, sometimes the page, this, this page is not used for student. So the, sometimes this page contains much information and they spend much time for explanation. But the system automatically recognizes this feature slide is more useful. And uh, that slide, for example, the first slide is not important for lecture. And they summarize this data and put the e-learning system again. And the student who cannot, couldn't attend the lecture, just watch the summarize slide and the catch up the lecture. And that is one uh, feedback uh, done in our system. And uh, let's move to the German results. So the, the DFKI is the German uh, Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. So the, currently they focus on the learning system, and they, they call the laboratory as an immersive quantified learning laboratory. And that is a picture of the, their classroom. They actually build the one, uh, one building for high school and embedded the many sensors uh, in the classroom and also developed, uh, prepared the, so the laptop that equips the eye tracking system. And they invite the high school student and the study in this classroom. And uh, instead, they monitor their uh, actual high student uh, status or status. That is one example. They they like to use the eye tracker. So the based on the eye tracking, so they uh, figure out, try to figure out many things. For example, that is the actual result of the eye tracking system. So the, from the fixation duration, and the, if the I, so the, their fixation is stopped, so we, they can extract interest of the student. And uh, also the, from the regulation of the movement, they can extract the comprehension of the student. Also, that is so the, so the nose temperature is uh, maybe it's funny, but uh, if you concentrate on something, the nose temperature is decreased because the, all the blood of my head is goes to the brain. This is because the temperature of the nose head is changed. And based on this change, they try to figure out the, so the cognitive workload of each student. And, uh, and the based on the, this uh, result, so they try to make the dynamic text. For example, the leading step is different by student by student. So that there are the two students for the same document. This student starts reading from this sentence and goes to this figure and goes to this quiz and back to the explanation again. For example, the left, uh, right women start first watch the figure and understanding what the question asks and go back to the explanation and go back to the quiz so which is so better? So the teacher doesn't know. Maybe teacher starts from this sentence and goes to this blah, 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 blah. Because the, the text is already published and the teacher uh, teaches from the first. But the, they try to figure out, uh, the compared by the novice student, expert student, the, the way of 
viewing is, should be different. And uh, they uh, put the hypothesis, optimizing the lecture uh, uh, textbook layout. Uh, 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 we can optimize the layout of textbook based on the novice or expert. And uh, for example, the, for the student for expert, I'm not sure. So, the, so the, some students start reading this from there. But the, some student, so the dynamic tick is just to show this area and the back to this area. So the feature is good for the student or something. They try to figure out uh, from the eye tracking system. Maybe in the near future, if we use the digital textbook, such kind of dynamic text uh, is, is become useful. And uh, that is uh, uh, called hypermind system, they call. Maybe that's movie show. <laughs> Mind builder, I, my student develop. So the, to make such a dynamic textbook, we need to prepare the good so editor for the teacher because the teacher cannot program. So this is because my student prepared the uh, hyper mind builder system. So that, that is very easy to make such a dynamic textbook. So like a Google Docs, so the teacher so upload the text first. eye tracker or some other sensors. So the, that is done in Germany and they, so the, in Europe, so they also focus on the IT-based learning system and they got a much big, a big budget from the European government and uh, start developing the building itself. And uh, they also joined this project held in the, uh, we call it a CLEST project, national project uh, done by Osaka Prefecture University. He is the leader, Kise Koichi is the leader of this project, and I joined this project. The name is the Behavior Change and the Harmonious Collaboration by Experimental Supplement. You know supplement. We sometimes take a supplement for our health. So we say that student experience or student skill can be the supplement for next learner. So this is because we try to first sensing the skill of the no, uh, expert student and make it a supplement for the novice student and uh, try to make the experimental bank, experience bank, and uh, like a medicine, so that we give this, this experience to the new student. But uh, it's very hard. What kind of skill can be the supplement? And uh, when should I give this supplement to who? and uh, how to give this information to the student. So there are many, many so problems, and uh, we, uh, the, this research is the five years 
big project, and the current is an intermediate time. So we have two more years uh, until finish. And uh, that is uh, one uh, example I showed. That we also focus on the quantifying learning. One is the, so the confidence, so how to measure the confidence of answer. That is a four question, uh, a four choice quiz. So the, that is the English word learning. And also the, uh, and the second one is the subjective learning, understanding, so how to uh, recognize the understanding level of the student. We use the seat sensor or eye tracking system. Also, th that is a it's one of the funny examples. How, so our system can estimate, predict the TOEIC score, English level, by using the eye tracking system. Just several seconds, we can easily so the estimate the TOEIC score, yeah. And uh, f we first uh, explain about the TOEIC uh, prediction system. So the, t as you know, the TOEIC score is uh, uh, between the 10 to 990 points. And uh, we ask the student to do the TOEIC test, uh, 20 subject and uh, 15, uh, at, uh, I correct the doc uh, 15, uh, sorry, I asked the student to wear the eye tracker, SMI's eye tracker, and read the 15 English document, mm -hmm. and uh, to monitor the understanding. So the, and after that, we asked, which one do you know? It, this one is uh, uh, the known ones and unknown ones, and they make a model, and they try to predict the TOEIC score based on the eye movement. That is the result. So the, so the, we use a, many sensors on the many results, uh, and uh, that is the, so the result. The left-hand side shows the user-independent, but the text-dependent. So first, so we ask the student to read the same text, and, uh, and uh, estimate the uh, TOEIC score. And the, the accuracy is around 10-point difference. So very accurately, we uh, est can estimate. And uh, that is the text-independent. So t test of data is generated by the different English text, and uh, we use the TOEIC test, uh, actual TOEIC test, and uh, try to estimate. The, the accuracy is degraded, but uh, we can roughly estimate English skill of the student. So the just one A4 page English document is enough for estimating the English skill. So that we can drastically change the test style of the English, I think. And uh, that second one is uh, confidence level estimation. So sometimes e-learning system use such kind of four choice quiz, and uh, sometimes user is that uh, sorry, it's very difficult to so the so the student has a confident and the answer is correct. It's very nice, yeah. but the student has a confident, but the the answer is incorrect. It's a problem, uh, and also the. The student is unconfident, but uh, luckily they succeed to get the correct answer. This should be reviewed again, and the system automatically should recognize oh. the actual understanding or luckily uh, select the correct answer. And uh, that is the result. With the correctness of so based on the correctness of answer, the system uh, can. Uh, can, can track just 50, uh, 60 per, uh, percent of the confidence. But the, and the, based on the time to answer, so the, if uh, students are unconfident, so the, it takes much time for making answer. But, the, but the, by using the eye tracking system, it's very easy to extract. So the eye is moving if they are, have, uh, they are unconfident. This is because the system automatically understand the, their understanding level. That is one example. Okay. And also, we use the eye tracker for understanding the uh, under, uh, sorry, un, understanding level. That is the Japanese. The, can you understand? So this is the expert, so the Japanese eye track movement. But that is uh, the non-expert Japanese uh, learner. Because the eye, eye movement is go there and back again and lead again. And if the, your, their eye gaze is and back and forth, and the, 
we can estimate the understanding level of this sentence that is low. And also the, we can predict the, uh, diff the word the student feel difficult based on the eye movement because the, they stop the eye. Of course, so, our, so unconsciously we stop the gaze to understand or understanding the unknown words. So the, from these results, we can estimate the understanding level of the users. That is a, the, the example of the quiz. We, for the, of course, the Indonesian, also the Japanese, study English. And we put, uh, make the application and assign the quiz. So what is the meaning of this uh, uh, English for this meaning? And uh, this is a form. And the student type, uh, type in this form and uh, make an answer. And based on the typing speed, we can extract the student understanding level or confidence level for their answers. Actually, the result is very high, so 90% from the stroke speed, so we can extract the confidence. Maybe it can use for the typing system or the typing system. And the concentration is also uh, sensed by the posture sensor on the seat. So we put the sensor on the chair, as I said, and from the movement of the student, we can understand the concentration level. So we get the many data from the many students and uh, try to uh, make the model by using the machine learning. And uh, if we can feed back in real time to the teacher, so the teacher can ask the uh, student, uh, unconcentrated student, or teacher can give the additional material for uh, help the such a student. Uh, five, five minutes. Remaining. Almost time, okay. O almost uh, finished. Five. And uh, that is uh, my developed, uh, so the student study support system. We developed the so Chrome extension and uh, it automatically correct the searching word. And uh, it means the searched word is the unknown word, unknown so knowledge. And the system automatically generates the quiz and uh, we also use the sensor for the, to find the micro time. If the student stop in front of the elevator, the application suddenly uh, say, freeze, uh, uh, un make answer for this question or something. And we, so the, the try to introduce such a micro learning system into student life. And also we try to extract the, so, uh, quantify the communication skill in the group work. So the, as, I, as, as the previous speaker said, the pro PBL becomes more important. So the, we introduce a discussion into the classroom, but the, some students can so join the discussion, but some can, uh, students cannot. And the, we extract the why the student cannot join, and that why this student are good at facilitate. So, Currently, we just make the data set for analyzing the student skill. And in summary, so it's time to finish. So the, I, I want to say various sensor in ubiquitous computing is already uh, deployed and we can use in the classroom. And also the, the special one is the eye tracking system and also the seat sensor or the some motion sensor and also smartphones, smartwatches we can use. And the, and the various state can be estimated by AI and uh, sensor technology and the skill. So not only the physical aptitude, the student internal state and skill, confidence, understanding level can be estimated through the, uh, the sensing data. Also, so the big data can collect through the e-learning system. And the academic should use the collected data, not only providing the system, but we can use the log for improving ourselves. And uh, that's all. Thank you so much for.